Um, <clears throat> good morning, all. Um, firstly, welcome everyone um, to the Turnkey Virtual Higher Education Conference, hosted, hosted jointly um, with ourselves and, uh, and Microfocus. Um, so today we have um, a number of sessions covering a, a wide range of identity related topics uh, and I've invited some of our university clients to help us and talk about their experience in, in all things identity. Um, so if you just move on, Nick. That's OK. Um, before that, I guess a quick preview of what's in store today. So we have a, a number of um, what we're calling mini sessions that are sort of 15 to 20 minutes long uh, that talk about everything from the future of identity uh, and the microfocus perspective um, with Mick Rutherford from uh, Microfocus um, to how best integrate with Microsoft cloud technologies. Um, again, with myself being helped by uh, Mick from Microfocus. Uh, then we have Dave joining us from University Arts London uh, and Ben from Turnkey, where we will discuss how you can manage your non-staff, non-student identities. And then Dave's also going to help us uh, discuss how to manage our IT, uh, IT admins uh, and other privileged identities. And then we have a, a panel session uh, on how a managed service could help you improve delivering your identity services with uh, Sue and Rebecca from uh, Bedfordshire University. And then finally, to wrap up, we have a discussion around how identity fits into the wider cybersecurity space um, with Microfocus and our, our cybersecurity team. Um, if you just move on, Mick, that's okay. Um, to kick us off with our first session, which is all about identity and what we're seeing both now and in the future, um, we want to start initially with what we see uh, identity looks like uh, across a higher education landscape. Um, and then based on what we're seeing in the market, uh, what the turnkey team feel the future has in store from, from a, a more holistic position. Uh, and then we have a deep dive with Mick on what Microfocus has on its future roadmap. If you just move on, Mick. Cool, so I'm your host for the day. So I'm Chris Boyle. Uh, I'm the director of identity at turnkey. Uh, I have 20 years experience in this space and have been responsible for delivering large uh, implementations across multiple IAM vendors, uh, including Microfocus, of course, uh, across many sectors, uh, but predominantly in higher education. Um, and for those of you unfamiliar with Turnkey, uh, we provide advisory implementation and managed services uh, from our seven global locations across identity, cybersecurity, risk management, and SAP. Uh, and I'm joined today by Mick Rutherford from Microfocus. So Mick, I don't know if you want to give sure. a, a Thank brief Thank you, Chris. Welcome, everybody. I'm Mick. I'm an Identity and Access Management Solution Consultant at Microfocus. We're one of the largest pure play software providers in the world. And part of that vast software portfolio is an Identity and Access Management stack. I'll give you a bit of a deep dive into some of that to make sure you're aware of what we can deliver and how we can help shortly. But I'll be popping up throughout the sessions today. So I look forward to engaging with you all in the chat window. Excellent. Cheers, Mick. Uh, and on that, actually, um, before we get started, just a, a quick note on housekeeping. So if you guys have got uh, uh, any questions, uh, please do use the chat box. Uh, we'll try to answer the questions at the end um, if we if we have time. If we do run out of time, uh, we will answer them after the session, um, but we'll definitely get back to you with, uh, with those responses. So please use that chat functionality. Um, Okay, so to kick, thing, kick things off, um, I'll be talking about IAM from a turnkey perspective, and then I'll hand over to Mick uh, to see what direction Microfocus sees identity traveling in. Um, so what do we see across HE? Well, you know, firstly, it's probably worth saying that we break IAM into, into kind of four key areas. Uh, so we have access and data governance, which is all about um, who's got access to what across the organization. Um, uh, access management, which is how users access the system. Uh, identity management, which is about providing uh, access uh, to users, uh, and then privileged access management, it's about how you manage access uh, across your most privileged identities. Uh, and each of the areas of IAM are, are broken down typically because each set of capabilities that you can see on the screen there um, is usually backed by technology to help deliver these capabilities. Uh, but also each area can be delivered separately uh, and integrated across different technology stacks. So all of these combined, uh, what we call uh, enterprise IAM, uh, which is uh, everything usually within the within the uh, perimeter of, a, of an organization. Um, so typically in, in higher education, we find that the focus is generally on automated provisioning. Um, you have thousands of students that are onboarded and offboarded each year. 
self-registration uh, is expected so identity management is really key to any university to be able to automate this, this process uh, in combination with that uh, providing a good user experience through single sign-on um, and then security through uh, multi-factor authentication because we have to remember that universities typically have you know hundreds if not thousands of systems where users have got to log in uh, multiple times that means you know potentially remembering different usernames, passwords, et cetera. Um, so we, you know, so providing single sign-on is absolutely key to, uh, you know, making that user experience much, much better uh, for users. So we see this as being, you know, across different universities, we see this being provided by many different technology stacks, um, perhaps even from multi-vendors within the, within the same university, depending on user type, et cetera. Um, and what we what we also see is a lot of universities implementing single sign-on and multi-factor authentication uh, more recently using a combination of the Microsoft Azure platform and other technologies such as you know, MicroFocus's uh, NAM product. Uh, we have a session on this later on how to get the most out of this uh, this combination. So in summary, I think you know we find that identity management and access management are usually the most mature across all universities. Um, but there's some of the key areas that are typically overlooked in higher education. Now, now this is uh, mainly around the governing of identities um, and the privileged access management via a, a PAM solution. Now, that's not to say this isn't done within the university environment. It's just that a lot of this is done manually or not via a, a central system, um, which can actually be time consuming and difficult to administer. Um, and therefore can actually introduce some of the more higher risks into the university if not managed correctly. Um, and Dave from University Arts London will be helping us later understand how you can improve in these areas. Um, the other thing is that universities typically have, you know, multiple accounts for staff, students, and um, and, and another um, other types of user, which actually is pretty unique against uh, other sectors. So providing some of the latest technologies, which assume a single account, um, can sometimes be challenging as well. And then if we just dive into the uh, identity management just a little bit more, uh, we find that the um, across the higher education landscape, um, the automation uh, and you know the identity management automation is usually really well defined for students with a high percentage of access and accounts. In fact, if not all of them being automatically created and provided by the systems. Uh, whereas with staff, we find that most access is automatic, uh, but there's still some manual provisioning that is that is required. And then for, for other account types, um, you know, visiting lecturers, those types of people, um, there's many, many different ways that, you know, that, that, that this is managed. Sometimes it could be paper-based, sometimes it could be bespoke systems, workflow engines, that type of thing. So again, we've got a, a session on this a bit later today. Um, so what got uh, into that in too much detail. Um, if you just want to move on, Mick, on to the, um, what we see as the, as the future of IAM. Um, so what do we see really what's changing both from an approach to identity um, but also technology wise um, well as we know students are, are now uh, treated as customers and therefore they have an expectation of a, a service a certain level of service being provided um, but giving this higher service level can be challenging uh, and therefore this brings uh, identity into the heart of this journey so Apps are more commonly now in the cloud, and the expectation um, that, that students have is that accessing them should be easy um, and done via a, a single university identity. Um, and if we, you know, we think about in the wake of COVID, uh, remote access is essential to, you know, keeping people able to learn wherever they are in the world. And combine this with most universities now having to give access to, to third parties. Now, whether that's through research partners, joint initiatives, NHS partnerships, or working with international companies, for example. Um, what we need to understand is how we take that existing landscape, what we've just talked about, and kind of push that into the future. Um, so one of the, one of the first things really is integrating all of the IAM capabilities that we've talked about into, a, into an IAM service, or Identity as a Service, or IDAS. And what will that do? That will give you a, a single view of, of access across the university. Um, it will help you with your audit and compliance requirements, especially for those you know, ultra sensitive information um, that, you, that you'd be working on maybe as part of a, a, of a, 
um, research partner or other sensitive internet initiatives that you um, that are working on as part of the, the, the faculties. So with a fully integrated solution, um, this will help you provide a better service across all your users uh, while reducing risk to the organization, improving security, but ultimately providing uh, that better user experience that is, that is really demanded. Um, a good example of this is reducing the impact of ransomware. Um, because if, if you think about how ransomware works, you can only encrypt what you have access to. So for, insu you know, for ensuring concepts like um, zero trust, uh, that becomes a lot easier to implement, manage and maintain when you've got a fully integrated IAM solution. Um, but the last session today uh, will cover much more about this. Um, and then lastly, from a, from a technology perspective, well, um, as we know, uh, everything is going to the cloud or uh, becoming SaaS, where you know upgrades and maintenance are becoming a thing of the past. Um, and then some of the advanced features, such as um, you know, artificial intelligence, machine learning, behavioral analytics within the identity space, they'll become the normal because you know you have access to those within the within the cloud platforms. Uh, with things like data-driven access decisions, predictive modeling, and automated risk-based controls, um, what this will allow is that some of the more kind of repetitive tasks um, that are carried out on a day-to-day on -day basis by the um, administrate, administrative staff, this will become you know, fully automated. And then because it's on a SaaS platform, um, when the vendors um, release these capabilities, um, so if you think like Microsoft and Office 365, when a new capability comes out, that's delivered across all of the cloud platforms. So you get access to these new features um, immediately. Um, but actually, I don't want to steal too much of Mick Sunday because I know he's uh, he's got a lot of this to discuss from a microfocus perspective. So um, I guess that's enough from me. Um, so without further ado, I'll hand over to Mick to uh, share some of the exciting things that microfocus are doing with all things like that's this. great. Thank yeah. you, Chris. That's a really great summary. So uh, yeah, you've stolen all my thunder. Any questions, anybody? Only kidding. Only kidding. <laughs> what, what I'd like to do is just take you through uh, the echoing of, of Chris's message and how closely we're working between microfocus and turnkey to, to really embrace that that breadth of coverage that is required by an identity and access management strategy. There are lots of different outcomes, lots of different levels of maturity or aims within an identity uh, driven architecture, whether it's hitting that first base of assumed trust, which hopefully we've all managed to grab uh, our arms around and embrace over the last few years, understanding, first of all, what's inside the, the premise uh, what, where the identities live and how we provision those, how we manage those internal silos to, to give us some degree of assumed trust. That's only taking us so far because the world has moved beyond that into a very well-coined phrase of zero trust, which takes that maturity a little further, where we never assume any trust about anybody. We always verify the identities. We allow more federation between external entities and, and make more evaluation over the, the controls that we, we apply in there. But you can even go further. And a lot of these far right uh, on the graph uh, elements have been out of reach of most organizations up until recently. We're trying to bring all of this maturity, this sophistication around uh, behavioral analytics and continual authentication and even uh, predictive modeling and corrective uh, real-time response and remediation, putting that into the hands of regular customers, wherever you happen to be, not just the, the people with the eight-figure digit um, budgets behind them. But there's a varied mix of technologies that need to be considered. And every organization has a different approach to this. Not every competency that you see here is a requirement, but it needs to be considered, needs to be assessed and prioritized accordingly. Not every organization on here is going to need uh, access management or password management. You may already have solutions in place for some of this. You might not be ready to embrace identity and access governance controls or even PAM. But there's a journey to take. You don't have to satisfy every assumed trust block to move into zero trust. But what we allow you to do is to pick that journey and support you along the way. So what I'd like to do is break down those four pillars that, that Chris talked about in those earlier slides and give you a whistle stop tour about where we are and the sort of highlights we've got coming next in each of those pillars. So I'll try and keep it quick. I will whip through the slides at a rate of knots, but we'll share the content with you following the event.
So the first area to zone in, zone in on is identity governance administration, traditionally known as identity management, identity governance, and user sourcing. And this identity governance space has maybe five key areas that I'd like to focus on. Identity manager, identity governance, e-directory. We've also got identity intelligence and console coming through as well. So we have had lots of activity in all of the areas of our software development recently. It's been a huge push for success and we've hit a lot of targets already with a significant number of updates through in this calendar year. And we're only just into the beginning of March. So Identity Manager has introduced a whole raft of features around containerization, about support for platforms and general enhancements throughout the usability. Identity governance, I'll call out a couple of things in here around the workflow building and the automation tools around that, and also compliance assessments, which are never something we should leave as an afterthought. E-directory is being containerized with support for Azure, uh, as support also for Windows Server and latest Red Hat deployments. Identity intelligence and identity console, let's take a look, another look into those in just a moment. So first of all, Workflow administration, let's take a quick dive into this. The workflows that you implement that drive your controls, that drive the, uh, the way in which you do business, the way in which you onboard a user or satisfy their changes throughout their life cycle, are quite difficult to map out. And we've always used our designer tool to do that. And I'm happy to announce that we, knew, we, we have a new approach to workflow automation uh, through our new workflow builder, entirely web driven, which will be coming along very, very shortly in early preview, but I want to get your hands on this as soon as possible. So we can create those processes. What happens when a user comes forward? What are the processes? Using a drag and drop interface, let's put the events in a sequence, let's drop the actors in place and then tie in the various approval processes. If you want to send notifications through that process, build the email, build those tokens in there, map them back to live data and send them out. We also want to give you immediate status overview, putting the controls and the visibility of what's going on in people's hands. So through our web console, let's give everybody access to seeing what's going on today, what needs attention, who's responsible for doing that, and giving that real-time snapshot. And it wouldn't be a microfocus console if we weren't able to click on things like monitoring controls and dig in to find even more granular levels of detail. Everybody gets an identity console. Everybody gets something that's appropriate to them, rules-based access driven, uh, giving the right information to the right people. But the sophistication doesn't just stop there because when we're bringing in things like identity analytics and identity intelligence into the mix, we're putting even more control in people's hands. We're trying to give this a couple of different approaches here. First of all, by bringing out a research and analysis desk to let you see what's happening and let you to plan for the future events that are coming through, supporting your decisions and giving you the metrics, the KPIs in front of you to make the right decisions with lots of good visualizations and lots of strong reporting capabilities. We are going to be moving away from our current identity reporting into this field of the identity intelligence, letting you visualize and drill that data in the appropriate way. So what do I mean by that? It's looking at that data, making sense of it, putting it in people's hands, letting you click and drill and deepen your knowledge around that information. We're basing it around the INET soft technology, which means it's fully supportable and generic cross-platform, and it will be the superseding technology to our identity reporting. It will give you the out-of-the-box dashboarding capability that you depend on so heavily, but it also gives you a migration from your existing custom reports. You can build your own reports in the new UI, but will also help you drive those forward as well. This is coming in for SaaS customers, it arrived for our early adopters at the end of the year uh, in 2021 and will be hitting mainstream for on-prem in second quarter of this year. So uh, just want to give you early insight to let you start putting some resources around that. So as I said, these are customizable dashboards. If you want to take a look at how the systems are put together, you can build your own custom dashboards with your own controls, digging through your own data, and then it define exactly who needs access to this. One dashboard for every member of staff that needs to access that level of data. It really is removing the power from that silo and giving it to the masses where necessary. 
Also, I'm very, very happy to announce identity intelligence, which is not just looking at the data here and now, it's also providing that historical context. It's giving you business intelligence across identity and access management. What happened to a particular user over time? How long did it take them to, to graduate, if you like, from one level of access into another, another role? What happened? When did the student start becoming a, a, a visiting lecturer or take on, a, on a, a postgraduate course? What were the entitlements that happened or were granted as a module moved from the first year to a second year? How long did it take to provision the identity and who was involved in the author authorization process? All through identity intelligence. Again, coming through later on this year, it's a very, very large deployment that we've been slimming down to make it more accessible, but it's based on our Vertica technology for consuming large data. We're also building in the autonomous IAM into the core platform, which will be using artificial intelligence that we have within our predictive analytics and our behavioral tools to provide you visibility and continuous compliance throughout a user journey, throughout the events that happen on any given day, looking at the anomalies, looking at the outliers that are happening as they are detected in real time, discovering the access that's being used in the system and being able to intelligently select and recommend roles and policies to fit your requirements. So think data mining on an entirely different level. This will be available and rolled out incrementally across our platforms and services. And we can expect that in before the end of this calendar year. OK, so lots going on inside the identity and access management. But we've also had a new stablemate join us from a different part of the business. As well as having identity and uh, access management, we're also looking at data governance. Not only who has access to which service, but who owns the data. Is the data duplicated? Is it redundant? Is it obsolete? Is it trivial? How do we process that? And I'll give you a very, very quick vis visual here over the deliveries we're, we're putting out here. We've got a file reporter element to go and discover. We've got file dynamics to go and correct and to remediate. And each of those are running on a six monthly development cycle. Uh, no prizes for guessing where we got these, uh, these code names for our various deliveries. We like space, we like astronauts. So Project Glenn, I'll skip through very, very quickly. There's a lot of things on the table here through its first delivery, which is first half of this year. File Dynamics is backing that up as well. And then into the second half of the year, the Project Shepherd for file reporters looking into more external repositories. It will be extending this into the Google Cloud, into your Google Drive, into your box. It's moving beyond your on-prem as you embrace that journey into the cloud space. And the same is also happening with file dynamics. It's pushing more into extended environments like your SharePoint, like Teams, other cloud targets along the way as well to provide you access governance over not just your rights, but also that file content and directory as well. When we wrap all of these things up together, this gives you a clue as to where we're driving the MicroFocus Identity and Access Management portfolio. We have Identity Manager, we have Identity Governance, now we have DAG or DAG in this as well, data access governance. And this forms that IAM platform as we move forward. And we're building that on top of a shared identity foundation. That's a little teaser for what's coming next with a shared identity repository, a shared set of applications and shared historical analysis. Okay, that's tier one. Tier two is access management. Access management has a whole raft of different technologies in there from, um, from Access Federation, reverse proxy control, single sign-on, multi-factor authentication, user help desk uh, support tools like SSPR, as well as the risk service, which we've extrapolated from Access Manager and made common to a whole range of different products in the portfolio. We've also added in capabilities for API management. So on top of access management, we can also look at checking in like an access gateway, checking in controls, put, putting throttling controls and monitoring an identity and access management control around the usage of and management of your APIs within your environment. This tees up very, very nicely with another element of the cyber resilience portfolio that I'll tell you about at the end of the day. So looking at the risk-based analysis, we could be looking at any given transaction that's happening at any point in time, not just at the point of authentication. And we can consider lots of different factors in here. Intercept is our entity and user behavioral analytics, 
but we could be looking at localized things like have you got a cookie on your browser how are you in a geographically sensitive location that means we should treat this with a higher level of risk beyond that we can look at identities whatever they happen to be users devices services items of technology if we can ascribe an identity to it we can monitor it we can track it and we can ascribe risk to that we can look at the types of transactions that are being conducted whether or not you're accessing the menu in the local cafeteria or whether you're accessing sensitive research data each of those transactions will need a different level of assessment of that risk posture to ascribe whether or not we want to develop a, a particular level of risk if it's a high level of risk but you only want to see what the bagel of the day is we'll probably let you through if you are in a medium risk area and you're looking at sensitive hr data then we will take out a decision accordingly but you need to be armed with the intelligence to make those decisions that's where the risk service comes in we're bringing more analytics into the systems as well putting that control at your fingertips removing the sentinel elements from our access manager product and giving you that common kibana based dashboard giving you a faster easier to use system uh, and support for plugging into your sim solution if you have such a thing as well but again highly configurable very fast to use okay into tier three which i term as privilege and delegation management a lot of controls around here beyond just privileged account management we also support the delegation of administrative rights. You all run large infrastructures. You drive a lot of technologies. And if you're using native tools to do that, there are certain challenges around that, whether that be Active Directory, Azure AD, group policy management. Being able to carve that into a granular way is often quite difficult. And being able to see what's going on in one administrative tool over another presents its own challenges. So we've had updates coming through towards the tail end of last year for each of these product portfolios including some that have released only just last month whether that be managing your uh, your active directory accounts or monitoring changes to key files on directories or even bridging your policies across from an active directory windows environment into linux into unix into mainframe wherever necessary we support all of the above and what we're trying to do within that privilege space and delegation space is to give you a single dashboard, give you a console that allows you to manage each of these environments through a single pane of glass. If you want to apply a policy across AD, let's see whether that policy will also apply across your Azure AD. Maybe the changes will also have to affect Office 365 at the same time. Again, it's giving that same level of control rather than siloed administration tools. Okay, so we've got different elements to consider here. Identity governance administration, the first wrap up of the pillar. We've got access management as the second pillar. We've got privilege management, and we've got the multi-factor authentication playing a, a key component in each of these. This is a common drive to the next iteration of identity management at Microfocus, all based on that single identity platform. And what do I mean by that? Well, we have always believed that you can deploy your software as you see fit, where you need it, how you need it, whether it'll be on-prem, in a private cloud, in a data center. But one thing that has been missing up until recently is a SaaS delivery model. Well, we've embraced that. It's taken us a little while to get there because we're doing it in a particular way. We've always believed that you have to consider several different elements in a unified platform architecture. You need interfaces for the consumption of the service or for, for building and designing that service. We need controls to collect identities, to review the assignments, to certify that things are correct, as well as being able to make additional requests. We've got operations that happen at the time of access for authentication and authorization, privileged escalations or federation, as well as time of, time of change operations around the joiners, the movers, the leavers processes, the life cycle and the orchestration of each of those identities. But across each of these elements of this architecture, there needs to be a persistent state repository. So whether you're performing a governance review or you're escalating an identity with privilege or you're considering risk, all of these elements that we've talked about need to be considered through that common state repository. There needs to be a common reporting structure and a common identity repository for each of these technologies. And that's exactly what we're delivering today. 
We have at the end of last year already released identity governance in the cloud as a SaaS delivery, as well as advanced authentication. We have a cloud bridge element because we fully appreciate that not everybody just flicks a switch and moves over into a SaaS or cloud model. You still have legacy technology that you spent decades building in some cases and working with. We don't want to forget that. So we will still support our technologies on-prem and in private data clouds and in data centers, as well as the SaaS model. So if we have to hark back to a, a legacy on-prem delivery of identity manager to do that, we can do that quite happily. They will coexist, and communicate seamlessly over a common identity cloud bridge, which is used for all of these elements. Okay. As we move forward, you'll see the contents of our technologies moving into the cloud increasing. That doesn't mean we're switching them off on-prem. Absolutely not. This is just a new delivery method. And what we've done here is give you a common code base for the on-prem software that matches the cloud base, which means we're driving a cloud-based service level architecture that is fit for both. It means we're not turning off functionality. We're not turning off features. We're giving you the same capability wherever you happen to host. So you'll see later on this year that the cloud identity repository should be in very, very shortly. That's the common identity source. You'll see common reporting sources in there as well. The ability to provision it into your on-prem as well as your cloud-based resources, uh, being able to mix and match all of the approaches you've seen before, and then incorporating your access management controls and your privileged account management controls with a good tailwind, hopefully by the end of this calendar year. As you can see, we've been busy. We would encourage you to take a look at any of the technologies you have deployed and ensure you are using latest and greatest cut because we've added so much in. If you're comparing us against other products in the market, please compare us with our latest suite rather than something that's six years out of date. But with that in mind, uh, I'll close this session. It was a tough ask to try and get this into half an hour. So I must take a breath and uh, I will pass this back to Chris. Who is on mute? <laughs> Thanks. Yep. Sorry, was on mute. This is what we've been saying for the last two years, right? Sorry, I'm on mute. Anyway, thanks, Mick. Um, we were going to take a couple of questions at the end of the session, but um, obviously we've, uh, we've we've run out of, out of time, so um, we'll answer all the questions uh, offline. Um, so I just want to I want to thank Mick um, for uh, for joining this session with us. Thank everyone else for uh, for, for joining. Um, we hope to see you for the rest of the sessions throughout the day. Um, we hope you enjoyed this one. And yeah, just want to wish everyone a, a fantastic conference. Thanks again. Thank you all.